CRC received from the transmitter. That means in the frame we have a CRC sequence. It will decode the CRC sequence and it will compare the calculated CRC with the uh, transmitter CRC. If they meet, okay, the packet is um, good and it will process it. If there is a, uh, the mismatch in the CRC, it will consider that as a CRC error. Okay. The next thing is the form error. This form is there are some like uh, we have a fixed form in the uh, like uh, the bit fields of a frame. If they are changed, it, it, it directs one or more illegal bits, they are considered as a form error. That means we have, uh, for example, the, for some of the fields like uh, uh, error delimiter or uh, uh, acknowledgement delimiter, um, some of the fields which are fixed. So those should not be uh, have should not have uh, one or more illegal bits. If there is uh, six consecutive ones, means they are finding some uh, zeros over there, then that will be detected as an illegal bit, and it will be considered as a form error. And then acknowledgement error detects whenever the transmitter does not monitor the dominant bit in the uh, in the acknowledgement block. Okay. Uh, what I told you, like uh, when acknowledgement error means, I told you each frame transmitted by at, by the transmitter should be acknowledgement acknowledged by some node in the some node in the network. Assume it is transmitted. When it transmits, it will transmit with the acknowledgement as one. Okay. When it monitors. The, it is it is not finding zeros over there it is not seeing uh, it is not seeing uh, the acknowledgement bit is changing to uh, zero it's always being one so then this is called as acknowledgement error the error signaling node that detects the error condition and signal the error by transmitting the error flag okay uh, as if we have detected some of the uh, error that we spoke about, uh, how they will signal it? To signal the errors, they use error flags. What is error flags? The error flags are of uh, two types. There are uh, some flags are called as active error flags. Some flags are called as uh, passive error flags. The active error flags, what is active error flags? It is consecutive dominant bit. I think from there, okay, brilliant. Uh, we will study that. What is the error flag and path? Uh, I think he has, we have here in this slide. The node which detects the error will have the, which is, uh, um, which is, uh, which is uh, as of now, it is an error state means there can be a three different stages. In, in the error. The first stage is the active error. Uh, what is active error? If you, if the error count, usually when there is an error that is counted, if the error count is less than 128, it is called, called, called as error active. When it crosses 128, it is called as the error passive. When you uh, that is, uh, it is crosses 128 and less than 255. Then it is error passive. When you exceed uh, 255, then they call that as a bus off. That's what I explained here. The node uses an error counter to control the transition among these three states. Okay. To jump from one state to another state, or error active to error passive or error passive to bus off, it considers the protocol used. Uh, the error count as the reference based on the error counts it changes the states the error count of the protocol increment based on the 12 rules if you see the spec can two spec we have a can two spec here we have some 12 rules to detect the error i think it is here yeah see these are the 12 rules um, 
in future i have idea of bringing to bringing these uh, 12 rules to uh, slides uh, here we have some set of conditions in which uh, that is the error count will increment to uh, increment by itself so uh, based on those 12 rules that you can study later i will send the document to you based on those 12 rules uh, if any one um is it has a some small rules guidelines based on that it increment when the error count is less than 128 node is in error active okay as i told you before when the error count equals or exceed 128 not higher than 255 the node is in error passive when the error count equal or exceed 255 uh, i use 56 the node is in bus stop okay in bus off when you are in bus off you are not allowed to transmit any messages you will be stay idle for a predefined period of time after that time you will again um, restart your sequence like uh, you will try to transmit you will encounter the error the error count will be incremented again there is an um, error happens and you are crossing the different stages you will come back to bus off at last the error active node will transmit an active error frame when detecting an error error passive node will transmit the passive error frame when detecting the error the bus off node is not allowed to take part in the communication actually that should be how a error flag will be did i miss that somewhere active error flag how a active error flag will be because till now we didn't get that information maybe it come it's coming it will be coming in the next slide the setting of bit timing in can system must allow allow a bit sent out by the transmitter to reach the far end of the can bus and allow the receiver send back the acknowledgement and reach the transmitter the bit time is nothing but the baud rate that we set to uh, transmit from the can to receiver actually this baud rate right this should be um, strong enough uh, to tra when a transmitter transmit because the speed at which we transmit right it should um, sufficient to reach the far end of the receiver those are connected in the network they are talking about like how how we have to maintain uh, the baud rate in the can uh, so that the baud rate should be uh, strong enough to strong enough for the transmitter and receiver to communicate without any issue uh, that's how that they are talk uh, they are talking about here yeah. the number of bits transmitted per second is defined as normal bit nominal bit rate which is nothing but the nominal bit rate is nothing but the number of uh, transmitted bit per second how many uh, bits that you are transmitting because it is a serial one so the bits will be um, aligned serially they will move one after another so that the nominal bit rate is number of bit you transmit per second i am i believe some somewhere i miss something i don't know because we used they used we have that in our uh, slide how the active error flag will look like hmm yes that's right is your error acknowledgement error the director of the plan was your flag okay that's okay but how it is communicated
this top this is about pod right and then we have a layer hmm. okay me i am i feel one of my slide is missing but i do not know Actually, active error flag is missing. It's a counter. Actually, it will um, uh, uh, the error flag is consecutive dominant bit. Will have okay error. Well, when we study about error frame, it used to come. Yeah, this is the place. Yeah, two fields error flag. The first field given a superposition of error flag. Contents of different node. Yes, this is what I am talking about. I I think we already covered that. Uh, the active error flag consists of six consecutive dominant bits. That means six consecutive zeros. The passive error flag consists of six consecutive recursive bits. That means six consecutive ones. Okay, that's how it is. Now, the, based on the error I have occurred, they will uh, transmit the respective flag. ISO OSI reference model. How you are the the can uh, layers, right? They are divided in divided into some seven uh, layers. First, we have applications layer. Um, I see from the bay bottom. If you talk, if you see uh, see it, see it, it will be initially a physical layer. Physical layer is nothing but where you used to uh, do a bit surfing and then convert your uh, uh, software packet into equivalent of physical signals. And will and it and you are transmitting it over the medium, transmitting medium. And uh, the above that we have a data link layer. Uh, it is it's similar to what a physical what a physical layer does. And then we have a network layer, transport layer, session layer, and presentation layer. Practically partially implemented by high layer protocol. I think what are uh, what are the different stuff the uh, that is happening in presentation session and transport is, is explained in the upcoming slides at the top we have application layer in this application layer uh, you used to have within the can protocol uh, can standard itself you will maintain some sort of sub standards like uh, uh, osec nm uh, and then uh, osec tp uh, like that we have a different uh, standard and can open device net something like that so they are the sub standard in the can they are all covered in the application layer only the logical link and physical layers are described okay the first layer the data link layer is divided into two sub layer logical link control and medium access control that is they are talking about this data link layer so the LLC sublayer deals with the message acceptance filtering, overload notification, and error recovery management. Actually, this is LLC. The data link layer has some uh, two 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 layer. That is two sublayer. One is the LLC and the MAC medium access control. This LLC sublayer, what it does, what the uh, act activity of the sublayer. Message acceptance filtering, and, and that is nothing but who, which message has to be processed and which has to be uh, filtered. Like uh, those decision is taken care by this LLC. Overload notification: if the uh, the frames are uh, are not unable to process by the receiver, he will notify uh, the overload. Uh, over that means I am overloaded. I need a delay. These sort of things will be taken care by. As we studied already, we have uh, we saw something like overload frame. That overflow overload frame decision whether we have to transmit the overflow frame or not is taken care by this LLC. And error recovery management. As I told you before, if the error count uh, increments whenever there is an error. Based on the 12 rules that we have, it increments the error counter. If the error is recovered, it occurs a two or three error count goes one, one, two, three, something like that. In that time itself, it is recovering. So that recover, uh, the, uh, again, the node can transmit the frames without any issue. That recovery 
management is taken care by this LLC only. The max sublayer, the next thing is max. The max sublayer present incoming message to LLC sublayer and accept the message to be transmitted um, transmitted forward by the LLC sublayer. It is just like a courier service. It, uh, it uh, gives like the messages which is coming out coming uh, from outside to uh, LLC. It just a handover to LLC. Similar way, whenever something to be transmitted, it gets from LLC and transmits. The max sub layer is responsible for message for framing, arbitration, arbitration, acknowledgement, error deduction, and similar. The MAC does all these things. What are those? Like uh, message frame, responsible for message frame. What is message framing? That means the adding bit stuffing or something like that, and then placing the respective uh, fields in their position. Those things are taken care by MAC. And then arbitration. Who has to transmit that decision? That means uh, uh, shifting the arbitration uh, bits uh, to uh, gain the bus. So that is taken care by me. And then acknowledgement when we transmit a message and then whether it is acknowledged or not, those things also taken care by me. And then the error detection, the finding out the error and then signaling the error. That means by sending the uh, active error flag or passive error flag. Uh, uh, it will uh, signal the error. Even that is taken care by the MAC sublayer. MAC sublayer is supervised by Paul confin confinement mechanism. That means uh, there is certain, uh, if the MAC sublayer has a boss to it, that is, uh, that governs MAC sublayer. Okay, so uh, that's how it is. The physical layer defines how signals are actually transmitted, dealing with description of bit timing, bit encoding, bit synchronization. Those things are uh, taken care of. Uh, that means how I have to transmit, what's my bit rate uh, to transmit the uh, my uh, frame. Those things are taken care by physical layer. The CAN bus driver receiver, CAN bus driver bar receiver characters, characteristics and the wiring and uh, connectors are specified in the CAN protocol. That means how uh, CAN um, uh, bus driver has to be and uh, the wiring, those specifications will be explained or that uh, uh, are uh, in control of physical layer. The system designer can choose from several different media to transmit the CAN signal. We, as I told you before, we have a different choice to uh, uh, select the medium uh, in which we want to transmit. It can be a wired one, it can be an auto, auto fiber optic one, it can also be a radio link. So it is all, we have a freedom to choose our medium of transmission. Uh, then they have put them in a diagram uh, using some uh, uh, diagrams they are trying to explain. So uh, what we have, we have a different, whatever we discussed, right, they put it in a uh, table, that's all. So. Uh, we have a physical layer which is governed by bus failure management and then here we are doing a bit uh, encoding or decoding and bit timing and synchronization. These things are taken care by physical layer. In the max sub layer data encapsulation and decapsulation and the frame encoding, stuffing and de-stuffing, medium access management, error detection, signaling, acknowledgement, serialization and deserialization. Those things are taken care by max. Then the data link sublayer, uh, LLC sublayer, what this guy does is he simply um, uh, does which message to be accepted and which needs to be filtered. That means accept and filtering and then overload notification and recovery management. These things are taken care by uh, data link sublayer. Uh, finally, we have an application layer. This application layer has a, a different OSAC uh, TP, OSAC NM, uh, those sort of uh, can open. Uh, like uh, it is something like our convenient or our uh, uh, we are making some sort of standards in the can uh, above the can standards that is called as application layer. Uh, this uh, all data link Mac and physical are man that is monitored by uh, the fault confinement system. All these things are implemented in the 
the chip itself, the CAD module itself, we don't have any control over these things. We just give the packet to be transmitted and then we will just take the packet which is decoded. That's how our job with respect to microcontroller. But this is how it works. These are the various things which is uh, various layers or various uh, sub-modules uh, which does the various stuff in the CAM standard. That's all about the introduction about the scan. This this introduction will be uh, the uh, more than enough to deal with uh, to move forward uh, move forward to to work with uh, uh, Keno uh, Keno or other can based tools. Okay. Um, do you have any doubts up to this? Any of you? Do not. Do you have anything? Uh, no. Uh, actually, answer sir. Uh, bit error and form error almost uh, similar to each each other. You told no illegal bit should be present. So yeah. If there is any consecutive six bits, then yeah. bit and form has the same condition, right? Bit and form that is. Uh, okay, when you come to uh, data, uh, the bit error, right? This bit error has some exceptions uh, to it. Okay, and then the okay. there are there are certain fields in a CAN frame or certain fields in error flags like overload flags or uh, error flags. In those things, uh, we have some sort of consecutive ones or consecutive zeros or something like that. That form that fits the form field should not be uh, changed to something else like uh, uh, we have one exception to the passive error forget about it we have uh, six consecutive zeros to be available for an active error but it is not in the real time it's not six consecutive uh, zeros dominance then that is as uh, considered as a, a form error the bit error is I transmit uh, a scan frame in that we have a data bit uh, that we have encoded in that because that whatever the bits that we have in the data field or in a frame, we do have a suspicion CRC calculated. If there is a change in that bit, the CRC will be uh, disturbed. That means if the receiver and if they calculate the CRC once again, they will get the wrong value. Whatever we transmitted and the uh, receiver calculated value will not match. In that time, uh, so uh, it is it, it, um, before calculation of CRC itself. Uh, we consider that as if I transmit certain bits in my data packet and it is not uh, as it was transmitted, then it is considered as a bit error. Yes, there are certain um, closure uh, uh, equality between these, but they are like somehow different. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Okay, uh, Rajesh, do you have anything to be asked? Okay, let us move forward. So next stuff, next thing is what, what whatever we studied up to now is just a uh, theoretical one. So we are going to see them uh, practically by use. Uh, using a tool okay that is a keno tool uh, we will study that in detail uh, i think we have some six minutes in that we can come complete the introduction about keno or uh, some basic introduction then we will study the uh, detailed the keno session in the, um, the next session okay so as of now let me up the keno sorry let me up uh, up the uh, next session slide so we will close this Okay, uh, in this training, uh, in the in this session, we we, ha we do have an agenda here. The agenda is working with Keno tool and brief discussion about the speech.
now we study theoretically what is can how it works how how, how what how what are the different uh, the things available in the can now we are going to uh, see them visually uh, for that we need some certain software uh, that software is nothing but the keno this keno uh, is uh, developed by a german based firm the same uh, and another german based firm called uh, vector uh, maybe they may have some uh, uh, the discussion from the beginning like you develop the software for us something like that uh, this vector um, so that vector provides a software also a hardware with their tool uh, the cost of the hardware is around 6 lakhs in indian money very pricey so it has a capability of converting your software instruction into the physical can signal that is the beauty of that hardware uh, and then it is doing that in a very accurate manner uh, as they are very expert and they are being um, working on it for a long period of time uh, they are master in that uh, in that field uh, every oem and every uh, that is uh, automotive uh, software supplier will use that tool to analyze is can traffic and to simulate or to transmit some can packet to the device interface so those sort of things uh, they will uh, for that they use only this tool because they are proven uh, they have everything ready in their software for various uh, standards which are available in the automotive they have ready made software blocks for them Uh, simply there are they, there are even the uh, that is microcontroller uh, code generation tool if you configure it it, it will auto generate the re required uh, uh, iso standard layers for you like uh, network management layer and then osec pp layer uh, you can auto generate the microcontroller code by just configuring it they provide that sort of uh, uh, that is ready made modules for the people we are going to study that tool in detail uh, in this session here uh, this what is vector keno as i told you it is a software to uh, monitor control and synthesize the vehicle network so th that is the use of it as i told you before it was developed by a vector based is a german based firm called vector okay to use this tool to use this tool we need some sort of uh, idea in our mind and uh, uh, what we need to work with that so in order to work with you know we need a hardware from vector which include can transceiver called a can card can case excel and vn1610 can interface actually this can card can case excel can case excel and vn1610 are different uh, uh, type of uh, can hardware but the, the uh, actions or the activities of the hardware is same so they will transmit a can packet from the pc to the external world and a similar way you can accept a can packet from the outside world and decode that as a software packet and uh, you can move that software packet into the pc then you can see that in their tool they have a, a software tool uh, the you know in that we can see okay to use keno knowledge of can is needed i th uh, that's why we had a previous session uh, to, uh, if you want to use the keno the can knowledge is needed what is bit error what is the uh, active error what is passive error what is mean the arbitration what is identifier what is the data field what is crc what is the uh, stop uh, start of frame and end of frame. all these things you should know before you uh, enter to learn uh, keno the demo version does not need a hardware and cannot interact with external can network okay what is the limitation that we have with the uh, demo version the demo version doesn't require hardware to work okay if that is the case uh, everybody will buy or they will simply download it is free actually this demo version they can download and use it what is the problem why they have to buy it for 6 lakhs how they makes a software which is of 6 uh, uh, lakhs is available for demo uh, and 
that doesn't not even require a hardware the problem with the demo version otherwise the limitation with the demo version is it cannot convert your software packet into physical signal because we don't have hardware in our uh, pc to do that so you cannot interact with the outside world using the demo version that means you cannot develop a product a can product and test it using demo version there is no use of it it's just like a matlab simulation or a lab uh, it's similar to matlab simulation uh, i am talking what our uh, that is uh, i am talking about the demo version okay the full version is different the demo version is just you synthesize everything in in your pc and will understand how a keno works 